And a, an amazing study came out of PRWatch.org yesterday, the, uh, the Center for Media and Democracy. Uh, uh, it's, it was so striking. I wanted to I, I just immediately, let's get Lisa Graves on to talk about this. She's the executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy, PRWatch.org. Lisa, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having us on. Uh, tell me about, it's a pay to pray, but P-R-E-Y, as in a predator preying on a person. Tell me about this. This is a new report that my organization has compiled um, and done additional research on about how uh, some of these governors uh, across the country have been advancing the agenda of the American Legislative Exchange Council and some of the big corporations that are looking to get their hand in the till of our tax dollars by outsourcing or privatizing government services to for-profit firms. And so what we've done is take a look at governors in a number of states, including Wisconsin and Florida, Maine, Ohio, Michigan, um, and uh, see what the real record of this privatization uh, frenzy is. And we've shown that it really ends up being a bad deal for taxpayers. So, uh, it, you know, I, re- I read parts of your report, and I read all the excerpts that were in your press release as well, and it seems to me that this is something that is largely happening in Republican-controlled states. Is that is that well, too partisan in an analysis? No, you know, in, in fact, I mean, it is happening across the country and states across the country in part because there's this sort of, um, there's this mantra that business knows best, despite what we've experienced on, with the meltdown of Wall Street and numerous other instances of corporate fraud and abuse. But um, well, but while there are bipartisan supporters for some efforts to privatize, what we've seen is privatization on steroids in states uh, led by governors who are advancing the ALEC agenda or governors who have um, legislatures that are led by or have a majority of ALEC members in them. And so what you see is sort of the Tea Party Republicans, um, the Republican governors that have really been on the, on the far right, uh, have been the most aggressive in advancing this agenda. This is an agenda that privatizes public schools. It's been privatizing prisons and prison services, privatizing our roads, even to foreign firms that really don't care what our roads are like. They just want to make a profit off of us. Right. And for people who don't know, uh, and probably most of our viewers and listeners do, but ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, which was started back in the late 70s by Paul Weyrich and a few other guys, um, and and uh, and uh, who's the governor of uh, Ohio right now? Kasich. Kasich, John Kasich. John Kasich. He was the co-founder of this thing, um, along with Paul Weyrich. Uh, ALEC pairs one-to-one legislators and lobbyists, and they get together 50-50, legislators and lobbyists, a couple of times a year, and they come up with, quote, model legislation that the legislators then take back and introduce into their House or Senate uh, at, state, you know, at the state level around the country. And, and it is so Republican that a couple of years ago, uh, we had a, a, a uh, at that time, he's a state legislator. Um, now he's a, a member of the United States Congress on our program from an ALEC convention who was getting dragged out. They discovered he was a Democrat and, and he was being this is Mark Pocan. He was being dragged out live and on the air from an ALEC convention. It was amazing. So. Yeah, it was- it was a surprise for us. You know, when we when I received the whistleblower documents that included all these bills that were voted on secretly by corporate lobbyists, as you say, voting as equals uh, with uh, elected state representatives, um, we had no idea how um, partisan and, and right-wing ALEC was. When we took a look at 104 of ALEC's um, legislative leaders, 103 of them were Republicans. Right. Um, you know, so it's pretty... Uh, pretty <laughs> partisan, although it claims it to be a, a bipartisan, nonpartisan organization. It really has been pushing far right ideas, including a lot of climate denial, denial of climate change happening, efforts to make it more difficult to sue if your parent or loved one is killed by an FDA approved drug. You know, just a, a whole agenda that actually really isn't pushed by a lot of Americans, but really advances the. Um, the corporate agendas of their benefactors, people like the Koch brothers and and other major corporations, big pharmaceutical firms, foreign pharmaceutical firms, as well. Right. And and what's fascinating to me is that while the idea that if you're in charge of a state, you should and you're the government, right? It's a, you're not General Motors. You're the government, uh, the governor or a state legislator. You really should be protecting the commons, the the publicly owned spaces, the publicly owned property, and working in the interests of the citizens. But 
for ALEC members and by and large Republicans taking the commons, taking the publicly owned assets and resources and turning them over for private gain, even if it hurts the state or hurts the citizens, is viewed not as a scandal, but as a virtue. Well, it was, it was really surprising to us. We were at the conference that Mark Pocan was at down in New Orleans in 2011 uh, after we launched Alec Exposed, and that was the conference where uh, Mark uh, was, you know, uh, required to leave one of the parties. Yeah, yeah it was <clears> the cigar party. The Alec party, the cigar party. Yeah. Um, but at that conference, we, uh, we heard from people who were in some of these rooms that, in fact, um, one of the um, people who was advancing the Alec agenda was saying, you know, the government shouldn't own anything. We, the people, shouldn't own anything. We should you know, sell off our assets. Uh, we, the government shouldn't own buildings. We should all sell, out, sell off these beautiful buildings to corporations, and we should be their tenants. We should lease those buildings back from them for our own use for the government. They, their agenda on privatization uh, is really the sort of far right of the Koch brothers' extreme extremist libertarian view um, that, that really denies government a role in protecting the commons, denies uh, that government has done well in many ways to really advance common interests, including through public schools and public education and through other public benefits that are, that are provided much better without the profit motive, that are, that are secured um, without having someone take a huge cut off the top. What we've seen in these um, outsourcing examples that we detail in our report on Outsourcing America Exposed is that uh, you, what you see is these governors outsourcing um, even economic development, you know, chamber of commerce um, sorts of activities, they they take the Department of Commerce within the state and sub, you know, basically push it out into the private sector. And then what you have is uh, sweetheart deals right. uh, for some of the politicians, uh, basically between the politicians and the corporations, where you have uh, corporations that have 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 been backing a particular politician getting sweetheart deals and tax breaks from these economic development corporations. Then you see instances where there are. Um, you know, corporations that have been benefiting from the privatization of schools, spending big money on lobbying and big money on um, campaign donations. And so I think that this privatization uh, uh, blitz that we've seen is really, um, is really an example of the corruption of our democracy in many ways. Yeah. And, and what's astonishing to me, Lisa, we're talking with Lisa Graves, the executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy, PRWatch.org. Outsource, uh, uh, give me that website again. Um, it's, it's, out, it's OutsourcingAmericaExposed.org. I know it's a mouthful. Okay, Outsource, Outsourcing America Exposed. Uh, America ex Exposed. Um, in the minute or so we have left, the thing that is so astonishing to me is that before Reagan, everybody in America, I'm old enough to remember this, understood that George Washington had three horses shot out from underneath him to create a government, that the purpose of the government was to protect the commons. And since Reagan, this right, I mean, they've literally spent billions promoting this right-wing Ayn Rand meme that government is evil and that all these things should most effectively be handled by corporations and billionaires. Well, that's exactly right. And, and the Koch brothers were right in the thick of it. Uh, Reagan's privatization commission was staffed with one of the leading uh, Koch guys back when Koch's had... Uh, Citizens for a Sound Economy, the precursor for Americans for Prosperity. Um, they have been in the middle of this. They have been fueling this craze to privatize uh, for decades. And um, now they're reaping some of those rewards, but we're the ones stuck paying the bill. Yeah, yeah, increasingly. And not just the bill financially, the bill in terms of, you know, our prisons don't work, our schools don't work, our roads are falling apart, our infrastructure is disintegrating. There's, there's a big, and, and, you know, look at the health care in Texas right now. The bill is the bill is huge. Lisa Graves, you are doing great work. You, all of you over there. At, thanks. And thanks so much. The executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy, uh, and and the, the website again. Uh, if you go to prwatch.org, you'll be able to get there. Find it all from prwatch.org. Prwatch <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Great talking to you. We'll be right back. It's 15 minutes past the hour.